So we're starting to make our way closer to doing a full hypothesis test. But before we do that, we need to talk about hypotheses and how to write them. So whenever we write hypotheses, we're actually going to have two of them. And one of them is called the null hypothesis. And the null hypothesis, null just means none. And essentially what we're saying is that nothing has changed. That is what a null hypothesis is all about. The good news is we always use equal in a null hypothesis. And again, we're talking about the population. So in a previous example, we looked at the cracking rate of items at the steel mill. And we said that the cracking rate had previously been 20%. So that is the population has a cracking rate of 20%. So the population of all of the items at the steel mill. And that means our null hypothesis is going to be, and again, I'll show you step by step how we would write it, H sub zero, the zero tells me it's the null hypothesis. Then I would use P, P because this is a proportions question and P tells me it's proportions and then equals and then whatever we assumed it to be, which was 20% because that's what we had had before. So remember, we're hypothesizing that nothing has changed. So it does not matter that I actually found a sample of 17%. It only matters that I'm assuming that nothing has changed, that it will continue to be 20%. Then I will write this in words. And a lot of people miss this point every time on every assessment, and it's just silly. All I need to do is state in words what P equal point to means. And in this case, and again, we're talking about it in words and in context. So I'm not just going to say, we assume nothing has changed. I'm going to say, I assume the cracking rate at the steel mill is 20% because that is what this is telling me, that the cracking rate is 20%. The other hypothesis is called the alternative hypothesis. And this one's difficult for a lot of students because this is all context-based. So here I'm gonna write H, A, and then it's gonna be P, and then it's going to be one of these things. So we're going to talk about each of those in detail. But that means there's three different options. Now, what I do want you to understand is whatever number I used before. So previously, in my example, I used 0.2. It's still going to be 0.2. Those numbers will always be the same. But then whatever goes here is based on the context of the question or way, the way the question is written. So if they said, is there a significant difference in the cracking rate from the 20%? Then I'm going to choose not equal to. And not equal to says, I'm interested in whether the value is very, so again, my sample value is very far below or very far above what I would expect to happen naturally. So in the middle of my model would be that P, the, tw the point two, and my question is, when I found my sample, was it within this region that's okay? Or was it very far above or very far below? And again, not equal to says, we're gonna take both of these sides. And the good news is both of those sides are equal, which means if it's two-tailed, I'm going to find one side and then I'm gonna take it times two and that will give me all of the area contained in both sides. For the question that says less than, they would be saying, and I think this is the way I'd phrased it in our original question, is does whatever manufacturing process, is has that lowered the cracking rate or is it just by natural sampling variation? And so because it's talking about did it lower the rate, I would use less than. And again, this is called a lower tailed test just because if again, P is in the middle, we're saying is it far enough away to the left or more extreme? And again, that's how we're gonna find our P value is finding the area in here. If it said 
something about did it increase the cracking rate, then I'm going to use the greater than. And again, that's called upper tailed because it's on the upper side. And we're looking at whether or not the true proportion is greater than the hypothesized proportion. So again, this just sort of spells out for us when we would use which one. So if the question said the new engineer is interested in whether or not their, the cracking rate has changed, that implies we're just looking for a difference, whether it's significantly more than or significantly less than 20%. And so notice the null hypothesis is that P is equal to 20%. And then again, the cracking rate is 20%. And then my alternative would be based on the fact that we're just worried about whether or not it changed. And then again, the cracking rate is different than 20%. This would again be that two-tailed test. The next one is if the question instead said the new engineer is interested in whether the cracking rate has increased, well then again, I'm still using my null hypothesis that nothing has changed, but my alternative is that P has increased or is more than 20%. And again, I'm just then writing it in words. And then last one, if the new engineer is interested in whether the cracking rate has decreased, then I'm going to again use a null hypothesis of equals 0.2 because the null is always that nothing has changed. But my alternative is going to be less than because I'm seeing if it has decreased from the 20% we assume is true.